Supply alert. You can't be kidding me. Outside, chaos reigns. There has been a plane crash near Hyde Park in central London. Inside. Several people are still trapped in the public storage facility. It's just beginning. Hello? There's no way that was a normal cargo plane. Something on board. Something top secret. What do you think it wants? Hey, maybe it's trying to find another way in. Which means we need to get out of here before it does. With it, was your intention with this film to make a uniquely British sci-fi movie? Uh, our intention, firstly, was just to make a sci-fi movie, you know, and uh, Johannes Roberts brings the horror element to it because he's a big, he's a big horror fan. But but yeah, to make a Brit obviously make a British sci-fi movie, and make something that hasn't been done here, uh, at least for a long time, if not before, you know, because I feel like. As a sci-fi fan, and uh, I know there's a lot of horror fans, you know, there's always like Fright Fest or, or sci-fi, you know, things, but there's not a lot of produced mainstream movies for these fans to go see in this country, and so that's really what we wanted to do. Why do you think that is, that there isn't such a, uh, an industry for sci-fi? Because it's something we do really well. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I don't know, man. I think it's difficult because the budgets here are generally so low, you can't always get the scale that you want. You know, and, and we've, we, I mean, our budget wasn't massive, but we've really just tried to put it in the places that it was, excuse me, needed to make the film, you know, look like it has scale and, you know, and be exciting, you know, and, and hopefully we've done that. So was it difficult to get funding for it? Uh, as, difficult as, any, as difficult as any other film, but, you know, the, the problem, of course, is that, you know, you know, doing sci-fi here is, is, is a tougher sell than it is in America. You pitch it in America, they're like, can I sell it? Great, we'll do it. Whereas here, it's like it, it's it's still kind of unfamiliar unfamiliar territory for a British, you know, a British film. So you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, we we've done that and done it all right. Because British films always seem to be either costume dramas or urban dramas, which yes. you know, you've already done yourself. Yeah, which I've which I'm <laughs> responsible for most of the year. I just feel like we need to do some broader, more exciting more commercial, entertaining films, you know. I want to be entertained. And there's a, such a huge sci-fi audience that isn't catered for, so hopefully they'll they'll all get behind this and go and see it, you know. And why do you choose a storage unit? Um, first, because you've already done Council Estate, and Joe Cornish did Council Estates and yeah, Alien, so... Yeah, it? well, he had, like, uh, uh, about... He had 80%, 80% bigger budget than us, I can say that for a start. But... <clears throat> Partly the, the reason for the storage facility was because it kept the cost down. Because, you know, to be able to get the, the CG uh, VFX on the alien and to put that where it needed to go, we couldn't move around too much. So we kind of needed one location. And so that was the, the, that was the storage facility. And I'd had that idea because I'd been to storage facilities a few times with my wife. And I was just in there and like, this is really freaky. And it'd be good to set a film in here. And then, you know, that went on for a while and evolved into this idea. And, uh, and, and so that, that's the reason. It's also not a comment on the state of society now that everybody has to have these lockdowns. No, 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 <laughs> no. It might, it might kind of, you know, kind of do that by accident, but definitely not. It's kind of just, it's kind of just like that one location keeps the budget down, <laughs> you know. And so that's what we chose. <clears throat> Is that why you went for a practical monster as well? Yeah, again, so, you know, same reason, you know, we had... We had a practical monster and then put the VFX on top of it because there was just no way we'd be able to do a fully VFX creature. You know, like the Americans can do that all day long, but we don't have the capability to do I mean, you know, unless you're like a big studio film, you know, uh, you don't have the capability to do that. And yes, the studio is putting this film out, but you know, we made the film and, you know, it needed to be able to be done properly. So uh, yeah, practical guy in a suit. You know, but uh, with the VFX and on top of it and the darkness, we're hoping that it kind of works. There was the scene where you're crawling through the or the the vents, the vents and stuff. You yeah. didn't think of doing a little pastiche to Die Hard and you know, go through in a vest or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know what? It's weird you say that because <clears throat> my original idea, you know, when talking to Johannes after I brought Johannes on and we were talking about the character and how to make him different and downtrodden, you know, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if he ends up in a vest? You know, and Johannes was like, no, because, y y you know, you've got quite muscly arms and what we don't want is him to lose who he is. You know, and if you suddenly see this guy with, like, tattoos and arms, then, you know, it might not be Charlie. So we decided to keep the shirt on. 
If someone had bought me this, it wouldn't have taken me five years to that place. Oh! <laughs> I'll take that. It's awkward. Yeah. Awkward, buddy. Yeah, you might want to just leave it, Charlie. Mind your business leave a little it. bit. Yeah, just uh, don't don't stop on my account. Charlie, mm. what are you doing? What I'm. A... You shouldn't be here. Look, I left a message on your phone telling you what time I was coming. Oh, so you so you, so you wanted me to see all of this then, did you? Uh... Charlie, what do you want? Babe, I want to know what happened to us. That's what I want. Charlie, now's not the time. No, yeah. I don't, Mark. I don't care that. Everyone else is here, you know. I just I want to know why we're splitting up. I want to know why we're standing here with our stuff in boxes. I want to know. Charlie, I meant what do you want from storage? <laughs> so, wait, when you wrote it, did you originally have the idea of casting yourself as the hero? Um, I think uh, this film I always wrote to play that part, um, but it, it was one of those ones where he, he had to be decidedly not the hero at the start. Mm. He had to be very different to everything I'd done, you know, sort of really nine to five jobs worth, you know, always finds a problem in something, kind of a weak-willed character. And I think it was important for me to, to play that character because then when he, when he becomes who he is, he's gone on a journey. And I think that was important, you know, because I've played lots of characters that are like from the outset. And it was very important, like, you know, like I did in Ben Miller's Huge to play something very different, very down. And, and so, uh, yeah. A good storytelling does have have that art where it is the downtrodden guy who comes the hero and has. That's his... right. That's right. And then that's what we wanted to do, you know. And I think people have seen me do that a lot, so it was important to do that. <laughs> See, there's no way that was a normal cargo plane. They've locked down half of London. Military everywhere. Snipers, the lot. That another large aircraft is heading towards UK airspace and has ignored all known landing requests. The MOD now have confirmed fighter jets have been scrambled and are on an intercept mission. In a surprising and alarming move, tanks are on the streets of London. Uh, it's really great to see a, a good homegrown sci-fi horror movie. Thank you. Yeah, yeah not many around. Now, how difficult is it to get a film like this made? Uh, I mean, with my clout, I could just do it. No, <laughs> um, uh, it, I d yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's an unusual thing, I think. I, I think it is very unusual. Hopefully the, the, this becomes a huge box office hit and then there's loads more, all made by me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, is an unusual, it is an unusual thing to do, sci-fi in this country. Why do you think that is? Because we're really good at it. Yeah, I think, I think, which I hope storage does well, is it's, it's going, okay, look, you know, because the, we don't have the money and the infrastructure to do Prometheus, uh, you know, I mean, obviously English director, but, um, you know, to, to do those kind of scale movies, they, they have to be sort of, and we don't have that. And sci-fi kind of demands a lot of money you need a if it's a different world or it can do and it's working out how to to face that world and to tackle it head on i think uh, which i think storage does but do it in a way that 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 really works on 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 maybe a a, a budget that isn't isn't 150 million dollars well, I, I disagree i think it's really easy to do really good sci-fi on so? a low budget because yeah. if you've got a good story that's that's true. I just yeah. I mean, I I uh, it's just I think an audience has has come up uh, sort of expecting maybe that the, the you know the different world. It depends, I suppose. What if you've got a good story, then yeah, the world is your oyster. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd love to love to do maybe maybe this there will be much more sci-fi. We hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We run a sci-fi festival. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and we need the content. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But when you, you shot it all on digital this time, did you? Uh, this was on Alexa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there was a lot of use of very shallow depth of field. Yeah, that's that's kind of my style at the moment, I suppose, with the DP I work with. Yeah, because yeah, uh, it's quite common with the DSLRs, everybody's... It, that, yeah, it's a funny thing. It's, um, I... Uh, we did, I did a, a movie before this called F, um, and with the dp that i worked with who then i brought onto this we really wanted to move away from the sort of standard way of shooting a genre movie and so we we sort of 
worked on this grammar of really tight close-ups and, and very shallow depths of field and then kind of brought that maybe to a lesser extent to this. But in the meantime, yeah, the DSLR thing has, has sort of become a big thing and there is, a, there is quite a... Uh, there is quite a, I can see like straight away when I watch a music video, I'm like, okay, you shot that on a DSLR. And then it does cause the, a sort of similar thing. So I have to say, maybe my style will change yeah. slightly. And it's, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because we, we run a 48 hour film challenge. And, and uh, you get that a lot, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, every, oh yeah, right. Yeah. They're yeah, trying yeah. to get that look. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what about all the, because you used a lot of practicals in this, didn't you? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a good mixture, a good mixture, I think. It, I think it's a, um, I I love practical, you know, I grew up on The Thing, I grew mm. up on, you know, those kind of movies. And, and you just need, you need it there. But you need to then, to to ignore technology is a dangerous thing then. You need to be able to, to, to uh, mix, mix, mix the, the, the um, things together. Uh, and I think that, that's, to me, that's what really works about the movie is, 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 a, is its knowledge of the past mixed with the future. But was it a choice because of budget or because? No, it was. Um, I, I I could I could go uh, either way. You know, initially it was going to be all done CG, um, and in fact, do, m doing practical is a lot more time consuming, um, and it's a real pain in the ass because you know you just want to go right. Okay, let's let's do this afterwards. You know, if we can do it afterwards, it'll be fine, and then spend the time in the you know someone yeah, on fix the it in post. Yeah. But um, so no, I was really, really, and the wire work is so time consuming, mm. so time consuming. Um, so no, it was, it was just, I just really felt that if we were gonna make a movie that competed with, with bigger movies, I needed to, to work out, I needed to, my creature to be a, a, a character. And that's what the, this, if this film was gonna work, people needed to love the alien as well as fear the alien, you know? In, in the same way you do with Gremlins or something like that. You know, you, you love, you know, they're just great characters. And that's what I really wanted, is this, to have a really good character. He's gonna get us all. So what do we do now? Hello! It's coming. Storage 24. In cinemas June 29.